Hey guys, Chris here. Today we have a story about a 10 year old boy who goes missing while camping with his family in the mountains of northern Utah. We're gonna find out what happens to him. That's next. And for today's beer, we have Leave No Trace Alpine Lager by the Great Basin Brewing Company. And we are gonna go drop that in the Middle Fork of the Feather River. Okay, so today we're along the Middle Fork of the Feather River in Northern California. It was one of the original rivers set aside in the Wild and Scenic River Act of 1968. And what that means is there's no dams on it and it's left in a kind of a free state for recreation, kayaking, fishing, camping, things like that. Pretty cool, look up though, Wild and Scenic Rivers in the United States. Okay, time to crack the beer here. Leave no trace, I like that. There we go, whoa! <laughs> leave no trace principles. And that would mean do not leave the can, pack the can with you. There we go, oh. All right, cheers. That is good. Interesting, this next story takes place in the same exact mountain range as my previous story about the mother and daughter that went missing in the High Uinta range in northeastern Utah. Same mountain range, other end of the mountain range. This mountain range has got 13,000 foot peaks, runs east and west, extreme northeast corner of Utah and this lake that this family was camping at was called Paul Lake and that was at 10,000 feet so they're already really high up there a uh, the very outdoorsy family it was the uh, 10 year old boy Malachi his sister his brother his father and his father's friend decided to go camping and they left from a place called Paradise Park, which was a reservoir with a campground, and then they it looked like, from what I could see, they backpacked into this Paul Lake, because I saw pictures of their tents along Paul Lake, and they were going to spend a few nights there, and this was in August of 2015, August 23rd to be exact. They were hanging out at this lake, doing some fishing, just enjoying the summer weather, high country, and Malachi was an outdoor kid, grew up camping, even had some little bit of uh, survival skills, you know, what to do if you were stuck out overnight by yourself, what would you do, um, knows how to fish, start a fire, things like that. Really good to know, <laughs> really good stuff to know. And this Malachi had been fishing, he caught a nice trout and he decided to go into the woods 
and look for mushrooms. Apparently he had been studying mushrooms and he was going to go collect some mushrooms and add it to his fish once he cooked the meal of the trout. Went in apparently too far and got lost. Something happened. That's the last the family saw of him. 10.30 in the morning, August 23rd, 2015. The father, after about 30 minutes, they, they all noticed, where's Malachi? He's not here. We're camping and we were all, people are doing their different stuff, fishing and hanging around the camp and they didn't couldn't see Malachi. They couldn't find Malachi. Immediately started yelling, looking, double checking, you know, behind the tents or whatever, to make sure he's not right there somewhere. And then the father knew something wasn't right and he hiked, immediately hiked back down to the Paradise Park campground, got in his vehicle, and drove down the road until he could get cell phone reception and call the authorities and let them know their son is missing. And he told them exactly what happened. That day, they started a search. They pulled together a search pretty quickly. This was the uh, Sheriff's Department in Northern Utah. I'm not sure, I think Summit County. Uh, this is also in the Ashley National Forest, very large national forest. They had over 80 people in this search effort, search and rescue effort. People on horseback, ATVs, search and rescue, sheriff's department came up to the lake and they're all searching. And they fortunately had an exact spot, this Paul Lake, to at least start from. And night came, and it was going to be pretty cold that night, 30s, I believe high 30s. There was no precipitation coming in, no rain, no storms, no snow. So that was really helpful for that first night. At least just to know there's not a big storm rolling in with their son out there. When they last saw Malachi, he had a coat on, pretty good winter coat, and a backpack. They weren't sure what was in the backpack. Always when you get lost, you assess what you do have and where you are and what time of day it is, but you always assess, okay, what do we have to work with? Night came and the dad decided to stay in the camp right at Paul Lake and build a big campfire, kind of like a beacon or whatever. And he didn't want to like leave and then have his son come back and nobody's there. So they stayed there in the campground, stayed up all night, very concerned. The dad did say if there's anybody that could survive the night, it would be Malachi. He was a very outdoorsy kid. His dad taught him some things. And in fact, the week before he went missing, Malachi and his, one of his friends were in the backyard and they were playing and they said, hey, let's pretend we're lost for the night. What would we do? And so they built a big pile of leaves, crawled under it for insulation, uh, built a lean-to, block the wind, some kind of a shelter, and a few other things. And so he's already thinking in his mind, what would he do? So that's really important, really helpful to the situation. Next morning comes, the search starts all over again, early in the morning. And they have helicopters and airplanes, search airplanes way high, and then apparently what happens is search airplanes are a lot higher and they're looking, and then when they see something in an area of interest, they can get the helicopters to come in and go a lot lower to really check in and go slowly and, and really get some good coverage of an area. They also had search dogs. Really interesting. One of the search dogs got a scent of something, and most likely the boy, because they probably had some additional clothes back in the car or something, and, and however they work with search dogs, but they give him the scent, and they say, Here, here's what Malachi would smell like, and go, let's go look for that, right? <laughs> so apparently this dog got a scent of something down in this ravine, and they were, so they, the search party went that direction, part of the search party, and then they said, let's get, the airplane over here and the airplane flew over and they spotted something 
down in a meadow, curled up and lying there. So they got a helicopter in to go get a closer look at it. Turns out it was Malachi. They landed the helicopter, went over there, and he, he sprung up and he, he, he headed towards them and he was alive. Pretty amazing. And he spent 30, over 30 hours by himself in the wilderness. The full night and then that afternoon is when they actually found him. So what happened was, he said that he had gone into the woods to look for mushrooms to go with his trout. And he went, he said, I went too far and I knew it. I knew it because it's like, you know when you're fishing or something or you're look you're just having fun and you kind of go a little bit and you keep hop skipping further in and then he turned around to come back and he got lost because he went over a hill and down into a ravine and he ended up southwest of Paul Lake five miles away five miles <laughs> wow but what he did do is he kept his head about him and he didn't panic and he kind of accepted that I'm lost and so I need to do some things to take care of me right here and right now. I can't panic and try to get back because I probably will make things worse. So he started he did some fishing to see if he could catch another fish to eat he apparently filtered some water through uh like his sh a shirt i believe so he got some water and he found a, a stream that he, he could drink out of this is what he said and then that night before the sun went down it was windy and it was getting cold he looked for a shelter in this immediate area that he was lost in and he found these four large rocks and if you know the Hyuintas, they're a very rocky, high alpine country and there's a lot of these big boulders. He found four of them. He was able to go in the middle of them in these four boulders, right at like kind of the junction, I guess. And he spent the night inside these boulders as like a shelter. And there was a breeze. There was a pretty good wind. And he said he took his jacket and he wrapped it around his legs and then he when the wind shifted he would kind of shift and adjust most likely with his back to wherever the wind was coming because the wind was kind of coming at different angles at him he spent the whole night there doing this he didn't really sleep much at all he was pretty exhausted but he got through the night and these rocks were giving off heat from the sun the previous day so that actually helped him but what it also didn't do is that because they have infrared sensors when the helicopters are searching and especially when it's starting to get dark they can't see a person within some warm rocks that are radiating heat so they they weren't able to see him had they been looking in that exact spot but he was out hiking the next day and he saw some helicopters flying overhead. Flew basically right over the top, but he was in the tree so they couldn't see him. He could hear them and actually see them. And he knew he needed to get out of the trees and get to a clearing somewhere where he could be found. So he kept hiking apparently down this ravine and he went up and found an area that was an open meadow or clearing or something. He hiked into the middle of this meadow and he just waited for another helicopter to come by. He actually fell asleep. That's why he was laying there curled up when they first saw him. They weren't sure if he was alive or dead. They, but they went, there's a, a young boy, <laughs> they could see him, but he was asleep. He fell asleep. I'm sure he was exhausted. I spent in the whole night up, not able to sleep at all. So, but they found him, got him into the helicopter, 
flew him back, helicopter landed, and they radioed in that they found him. The family was so excited. They were just beyond belief that they had found him and he's healthy. He's a little tired, he's a little hungry, but they found him. And so the family was so relieved and he got out of the helicopter and the uh, pilots carried him out. It's like, he's not gonna walk, we're gonna carry. So they carried him over to the family and they just, the family just group hugged him and was just such a happy reunion to know that their son was back and he was, he was fine, he was healthy. And Malachi said, they said, well, how did you survive? I mean, how, what were you feeling? He goes, it was awesome. It was an awesome adventure. <laughs> and he treated it not like something to be feared, but something like a challenge, right? Okay, I am lost. I don't have a lot to work with, but we got some things working for us and they'll, they'll be looking for me. And he even said that. He said, you know, I knew I needed to keep going and, and come out of this because my family would have been sad if I hadn't. And so he was like, okay, I got to do my part. They're going to do their part and we're going to get through this. I might have to have a, 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 a night or two that's sleepless, but they're, they're out there looking for me. So, so he uh, really just kind of embraced the situation and made the best of it. And uh, what an amazing little kid though. <laughs> Malachi Bradley, 2015. And uh, yeah, so yeah, there's some really good lessons there. And I think the number one thing I kind of picked up was like just adjust your mind and your attitude of like acceptance that I'm not going to get out in this next hour here. I, I got to I got to prepare for the night. I got to accept the situation and make the most of it with whatever I got to work with. I mean, look at this, there's a, there's like a structure right behind me, you know, I could fill that with pine boughs and maybe sleep in it or something. But, but you just, you adjust your mindset so it's not all about fear and panic and I have to get back immediately. It's like, I have to accept where I'm at and tomorrow's a new day and I got to get through this night because once night falls, the searches usually always completely stop. There's just, it's just too dangerous for the search parties to be searching. And so you have to get through that. And that's why the, the good gear will get you through cold and wet and matches and all that stuff that we've talked about in the past. But yeah, amazing story. Malachi Bradley, 10 year old boy. So, all right, that, that was awesome, I think. It's good, good ending, good ending to this story. So, all right, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm going to be doing an overnighter on my next trip going up into the Sierras. I got this large meadow with a beautiful stream in the middle of it and I'm going to be spending the night right next to that. I think Thursday. So, All right. Love this. Nice day out here. I love summer. <laughs> Gotta love summer. All right. Appreciate you guys. As always, keep hiking.